Shalom. Shalom, brother. Shalom. Shalom. Tell her, tell her down next to you, Shalom. Now, we do this sometimes in church. You'll see people talk about peace. But Shalom in Hebrew means so much more than peace. It's not me telling you peace, brother. It's telling you that I wish you to be whole. That I wish you to be whole in your body and I wish you to be unified with God. Amen. When I tell you shalom, I wish so much more for you than for you to have peace. I don't expect you to have peace here on this earth. There will only be peace in the kingdom. I wish for you to be whole with God so that you can be in the kingdom with me. And it means more than just me telling one person shalom. When you say shalom, you mean you wish the world to be whole. It means you and you and you and you. You're all part of the kingdom. Our message here is that you're the most important person in the kingdom. You always will be and you always were. If you don't understand this, then pastors have failed in their job. You are my job. When I tell you that I love you, when my brother tells you that he loves you, he means he loves you. Not like the world would tell you that they love you. The world gives you some sign of affection and you have this expectation that they're going to give you something for it. What I give you is more than the world could give you. Amen. It's the word of God. God loves you more than you'll ever know. He made you beautifully and wonderfully before he set the foundations of the earth. He cares about only you. If it was only you here, he would have still sent his son to die on the cross. It, it doesn't make a difference what you've done. Some of you will say, I've done so many horrible things, but you have not. You have not. Your father recognizes you. He knows you. All the things that you hide from the world, you can't hide from my father. He knows them. When my brother preached a few weeks ago about letting your sins go at the cross, that's exactly what my brother meant. Put your sins on the cross and give them to my father. If you give your sins to my father, he will carry them away from you. And he'll give you so many blessings. He's given me so many blessings in my life, brothers. I can't even tell you. You come out here for the food. We come out here to love you. That's all we come here for is to love you. I want to share a couple of things. In Colossians 3.14, it tells us, And to all these qualities add love, which binds all things together in perfect unity. You see, we all know something which we desperately need for you to understand. We need you to know that you are the most important person in the kingdom of God. We need you to know that no matter what life throws at you or what you have done, our Father screams at you to come to Him. My father screams at you, come be with me. I love you. He wants you back in the garden. You have to listen to my father. You have to fight sin. This is where you fight sin. You don't wait to get to the kingdom to fight sin. You fight it right here. Right here, right now. Whether you like it or not, you're in a war. You must fight sin. Let me leave you with one more thing. I know you're hungry. And you guys know that if you know me, you know I love this verse. Isaiah 49 and 16 says, Behold, I have graven you upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. If the Father...